que este es el comienzo de lo que habíamos prometido, una entrevista junto a Morbid Angel, y aquí está David a mi lado. David, you don't speak in Spanish? No. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't. Okay, so that's no problem, we're going subtitle. So. Okay. Okay. It's great to meet you at last. It's Thanks great to meet the, the, the band. I saw you guys live yesterday and you were powerful, very powerful. Well, it's been That's a while it. since we played in the South Florida area, so it's, uh, it was really good to see not only a, a lot of familiar faces from the, from the times that we played before, but also a lot of new fans as well, so I think this kind of music is uh, continuing to be very strong. Let's talk about this album. This is the El Ultimo Album, El Domination, a Morbid Angel. Which are the difference between this new one and the last Covenant? Well, I'd have to say that the uh, the production on uh, on the new CD is, is much stronger, and I think by and large the songwriting too has evolved to a new stage where it's, it even includes more of a broader spectrum than we've ever had before, which is okay. you know adding that next dimension to Morbid Angel. Now, as this Morbid Angel, maybe it made a difference because you work a Morbid Angel again with a producer. You work with the producer. Yes, we, we like did work with a producer this time. Uh, his name is Bill Kennedy. Okay. And uh, I can tell you, I'm very pleased with the way that things came out with Bill. Um, he is not a what you'd call a death metal guy. He, this is the first okay. death metal band that he's ever done. Uh, he's mainly been, he's worked with Trent Reznor in the past. Okay. He's worked with uh, Tom Jones, of all people. So he's, he's actually a very, very broad guy. Um, and he, I think he helped us, he just knows good, powerful sound, and I think he helped us achieve what we're looking for with Domination. Maybe this uh, lineup, Morbid Angels lineup, the, the one you're playing now, for mm -hmm. some like uh, you, Trey, it's the ideal one now? I agree. Because of Eric now playing the guitar and well, the set. Yeah, he, and um, uh, yes, I, I think that, that this works the best now. Um, Eric has been a very good uh, addition to our band. He's not only a very good technical player, but his creativity is very similar to the lines that Morbid Angel had before. He contributed Even, in some uh, stuff. He has. He, he contributed to writing uh, several of the songs on the record. Okay. So let's, uh, we're going to talk about videos now because we're going to go to God of Emptiness, which is a great video. Thank you. Let me tell you, great video. Which is the, how do you try to translate your lyrics into such strong images? It's kind of hard well, to... Well, I'll tell you, a lot of people don't realize this, but these video directors that you see, they're artists as well, yeah. and they have a lot of ideas. So normally what happens is the band submits a song to the artist, to the director, I should say, uh, and then they, they are able to, uh, to get their impressions of the music, and they write up what is called a treatment for the video. Okay. Now, when this treatment comes back, uh, the band gets down and, and, and they say, with the, the various directors and they read over the treatments and find what is the closest to the band's vision on it and sometimes okay. it may be something completely different but you know our main uh, intent since these are not live videos is to have something that comes across that's very expressive that's very artistic that's mm -hmm. strong and that shows a whole different side to the band okay it really shows vamos a ver esta obra de arte que se llama god of emptiness junto david this is morbid angel It's, it's kind of different from uh, something we've done in the past, but it's still real strong. That's the main thing. We want to make sure that everything that's all about this band okay. is, uh, you know, always has that, that extra strength involved so people can really feel like, you know, they're watching more of an angel as opposed to, okay. you know, something else. It, it's weird because in a heavy metal dance, we don't talk about uh, in a heavy metal language about singles and why because it's a single. Why it's a single? Because it's a personal favorite? Uh, well, with... Death metal and heavy and, and the heavier thrash metal and this kind of stuff. It's usually uh, the band says, "Well, this is what we want to do," because it, there's not like a hit single. You know, there's not. We don't expect <laughs> yeah. to sell you yeah. know billions of this kind of record because this is a very selective form of music. And that's one thing that I've noticed with the fans of heavier music. They are such uh, 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 terrifically loyal fans. You that's know, when true. they like a band, they love a band because they're not. It's not background music for them. You know, they go and they are. They want to see a show and they get so involved to put so much energy into. It. And that's why I think that the fans and the bands that, that, that do the heavy music thing as opposed mm -hmm. to, well, yeah, these other kinds of music, yeah. you know. Um, uh, a much be better bond between the audience and, and, uh, and the artist. So okay. it's a uh, thing mixed for better, better live shows, better records, better videos, and, you know, just more soul involved in it, I think. Let's talk about, um, I don't want to uh, touch the lyrics of uh, Domination, but uh, as a general point, your philosophy, the philosophy of Morbid Angel, through these 10 years, you have shown, like, which are the common ground? I mean, we have talked a lot about, like, um, <coughs> a dancing, um, imaginative worlds, right. like, evil, right. uh, King Diamond, Merciful right. Fate. Right. Uh, 
Which is the philosophy of life? Well, let Morbid me just Angel? say, uh, and this is probably the easiest way to do it. I think that Morbid Angel is all about achievement and all about pers personal building and personal achievement. And we try to, uh, there's a lot of people that go through life almost with their eyes closed and they're part of what, it's like a sheep mentality, like a, like a, a herd of sheep and they just move around mm -hmm. and do whatever happens to be fashionable at the time and they don't really think for themselves. And we think that if people really applied themselves and really tried to reach their highest potential that you know the world would be a much better place. So we always encourage people to think for themselves and to question things when it comes comes in front of them to decide is this really right for me or not oh, you know that's very interesting. i mean we can talk hours about oh, that could, but it's, yeah. it's a very but, uh, deep thing it's like it's like in the in this uh, common ground with dancing it would be like a brand new god a, a god that is inside of us well it is it, there we is can... a lot of power inside of us that we need to tap into uh regardless of what people around us try to you know it, there's okay. there's always an agenda and an ulterior motive to someone who tries to make you believe something don't okay. ever forget that okay uh, we're gonna talk about that later. This is the Raptor Morbid Angel. It's been great to talk. I mean, as I, as I told you before, we've been talking like a, we, we could talk hours we could talk forever. about it. Yeah, forever. We could take about a it. whole show sometime. Maybe you can yeah. invite me back and we'll talk for a whole show. How about that? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that sounds great. Let's talk about now the, the, the lyrics itself. The lyrics in Domination, you are responsible for most part of the, the lyrics. Me? Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of, I mean, um, my, my question is, you think about like a hell, a devil, Satan as a figures of speech, as metaphors to something else? There's so many good things about well, this, like uh, the world you're creating. Yeah, it, it's, it's really, there's no one solid definition. I leave things very open-ended to a lot of different interpretations. There's, a lot of, there's always many different ways to look at something, and I try to illustrate this point with the way that I write lyrics, leaving them kind of open to interpretation. So when okay. someone asks me, what does this mean? I say, well, what does it mean to you? Whatever. You know, I try to get, them, get, well, well, I get, get people to think for themselves, and it may mean two totally mm -hmm. different things to two totally different people. But the point is, is that people have thought about what does it mean to them? And this is our whole message, is get people to think for themselves, you know? Okay, domination in terms of music. Heavier, faster, which is the way to... There's some uh, nice song here, Caesar Palace. Yeah, you like that? very heavy. Well, yeah, very it's real heavy. It's a little slower, but it's also, yeah. it's a very, uh, it's like a fantasy departure, thinking about, you know, going back in time and, and living, uh, yeah. living in, in this Hail Caligula, Caesar and everything. Caligula yeah. area, yeah. yeah. But um, there's something like, uh, you try to get into a slower stuff, or um, you, well, keep a, you, you, you we, keep the balance? Uh, on, on balance, it, uh, we, that, this is what we've tried to do. We've tried to have, we've always had real, real fast, crushing, in your face, just uh, heavy okay. stuff. Um, and we've always had like more middle, middle kind of really tripped out, spaced out stuff. We okay. try to make a real soundscape of a record where when somebody sits down, they listen to it with their headphones on, it takes them on a journey somewhere. It takes them away and they can really, you know, they can travel with us through a whole bunch of different worlds. Okay, let's talk about traveling. Traveling, you're doing a great tour. Yesterday we saw a, a tree of a malevolent yeah. creation. Grip Inc, Morbid Angel. How did you put together this tour with Grip Inc? Well, uh, yeah, Grip Inc is the actual band that we're touring with. Malevolent was uh, was a special guest for special yesterday guest. only. But yeah, um, we, you know, Dave Lombardo has his new band, and uh, we're we're very happy to be touring with them. I think you know they're doing a real good job. Um, slightly different style, well, mm -hmm. much different yeah, style than Morbid Angel. Us. But uh, I think it makes for a good a, a good tour. Uh, so far, we get along with the guys really well. So uh, I'm only looking forward to uh, have a good successful. So tour. are you planning to go um, home? How long? Uh, well, month? we're going a uh, month and a half here in the States, okay. uh, and then we depart from GRIP and then we go over to Europe. Uh, okay. We're going to tour for a month, come back here, probably Japan, Australia, and uh, maybe South as okay. well. We're going to talk more about tours because it's important, because Latin America, you know, it's waiting. Yeah. But we're going to watch GRIP Inc. is to us ostracized. Ostracized. Yeah. Right job, because we okay. don't want. Seguimos en Headbangers junto a David, The Morbid Angel. Let's talk about, uh, uh, we, we stopped in the Latin American part. Right, right. Uh, you, you having plans of going to Latin America again? Well, you I, to... I know for sure that we're going to Mexico soon. Uh, there's already been discussion about that. But I, I tell you, I'd really like to be able to get down to Chile and Argentina and Colombia and, you know, wherever we can have a show. It's just, 
uh, there's been a problem with being able to find promoters that are up and up that are going to, you know, do the right job. Because we okay. don't want to go down and have, you know, a lot of problems or whatever. But, okay. uh, you know, I'll, you know, I hope that we're able to work this out soon because I know there's a lot of fans. Oof, uh, man, you know, heavy Latin crowds America. in Argentina, right. heavy crowds. And um, which is the difference that you can tell? You've been in Brazil, you've been in Mexico. Which is the difference right. between the metal crowd? Is the same? The well, I would have to say that, uh, I mean, uh, overall in, in the Latin American countries, people are just, wow, they just, yeah, they, yeah, it's I'm just, it, it's crazy. I mean, you know, you play and it's just, they're just absolutely bananas, you know, which okay. is great because yeah, that just makes us want to put that much more into the show you know when we see the audience giving that energy we give it back and it just culminates into this big explosion you know what i mean okay it's killer morbid angel is a band which i think in my opinion uh, among with the um, the ones of death or slayer are the one that cornerstone of death metal music thrush death metal music so which are your responsibility for the future in terms of making music and try to experiment in new things because well, you're kind of I, leaders I, 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 I tell you we have a, a commitment that we made not only to ourselves but to the fans that we are always going to number one stay true to what we are number two be as honest as we can about our creativity and never sell out okay that's important and that shows you even you you were one of the first underground bands that went like working with a with a major label with a major label right. how did how did it feel it's it's kind of a well, it's better at the, well it, it's in the better long run? it's better in the sense that they are able to provide us with the best distribution and with being able to make the videos you know for headbangers ball and, and whatnot um, which the underground labels don't normally have the ability to do this, you know, the financial and the, you know the, the okay. you know the big powerful companies uh, able to open more doors for the band. Uh, thankfully, they have not put any any type of creative restrictions on us, so we still do exactly what we feel. Okay, that's and uh, that's I think that's the biggest that's the most important thing for us. What do you think of the ones like uh, Slayer or Sepultura, to name a few, which has been like gold records among uh, thrash metal music? It's well, kind of weird. I, I think that. It's uh, you know I'm very happy for anybody who really works hard and, and and tries to achieve success you know by through hard work. I never blame anybody for hard work. I can't say that you know the types of music that some of these play I, I like a little heavier than that. But uh, okay. uh, it's you know it's good to see that people really are working hard and that this that heavier music that the fans want it. They want heavy music. You want heavy music. Yeah. Imagine now uh, in America there is no more Headbangers Ball. So hopefully they will. Uh, Hopefully they'll get it back in their minds that they want to do this. You know? okay, that's going to last too, huh? 10 years, there's yeah, no right. problem. Last thing, personal favorites. Um, Trey mentioned here Alex, uh, Eddie Van Halen yeah. as an influence on the guitar. You have some influence in the bass or in the, in well, the vocal Well, I would have to say that uh, Old Black Sabbath was okay. probably my biggest influence. Yeah. And I was really, you know, really into the really deep lyrics. Uh, Ozzy had some, you know, really, really deep stuff. So. That influenced me, well, you know, from when I was very mm -hmm. small, so. Maybe Ozzy is coming worse. next week. Oh, really? Yeah, so that's going to be great. That's going to be great. Ya le hacemos un avance. It's not official, but it's coming. Um, you want to program something? Yeah, uh, you have Cannibal Corpse. Cannibal Corpse, okay. Staring through the eyes of the dead, you have that? Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you very Thank much. You, brother. It was a pleasure. Staring through the eyes of the dead. Es la petición de David and Headbangers Cannibal Corpse.